This is Get Real with Bob and Stacy, the show that helps you learn about the mortgage and real estate markets. Get the inside scoop from their expert list of guests and have some fun along the way. Now, here's Bob Callagher and Stacy Alcorn. Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. And our first guest today is Marty McDonald, CEO and co founder of Bad Rhino Social Media Marketing Agency. Welcome to the show, Marty. Hey, great. I appreciate you having me here. So I want to give everybody some background on Marty. He is the go-to guy for what works in social media marketing. As Bob mentioned, co-founder and CEO of Bad Rhino Inc. And Marty has used social media strategies to actively recruit and build online marketing businesses for over 12 years. He knows how to harness the power of social media and has consulted with small businesses and startups to help them use that power to get off the ground. So first, how did you get started in social media marketing, Marty? That's a, a long story, because mm-hmm. <laughs> it feels like I started in social media and digital marketing when it was in its infancy. So back in 2002, while I was a headhunter, I started really getting into the earliest forms of LinkedIn. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like people are putting their information out there and you could connect with them really easy. You know, and back then it was still cold calling. There's still email going on, but <clears throat> having this newfangled little thing that you could connect and create a community or interact with people was really cool. And I started to gravitate towards the social aspect of it. And it helped me find uh, jobs to fill, but it also helped me connect with more candidates and get more referrals. I started looking around on the internet because I was like, hmm, maybe this will tie into some internet marketing things. And that was the birth of it. Back in 2002, I started out as a hobby. Then it became a a well-paying hobby for the next uh, two, three years. And then in 2005, I started consulting with a lot of small businesses. And fast forward to 2010, that turned into a full-blown agency called Bad Rhino. Awesome. Where did the name come from? Everybody asked that question, and I'm pretty sure that's why we kept it. Mm -hmm. Um, My business partner um, at the time, he and I were working at a different company, and he had come into my office and basically said, you know what, I don't feel like doing this anymore. And I laughed, and I'm like, well, what do you mean, work for me? And he's like, no, just the work, this type of work. And he's like, I have an idea, and people have been asking me about it. And I said, okay, well, let me hear And I was interested right away from the, the concept, and Rich is a great business partner because he is very focused, but very thorough and well thought out. And once he laid out this plan, I said, Rich, this is, this is interesting, you know, building it off your current blog and current brand that he had called Corn on the Job. He had built a massive social media following that got him interviews and got him placed uh, in articles and things like that. People started asking him, Rich, how are you doing this? So him being that well thought out person, I said, Rich, come up with a name for this. And then once you have the name, you know, I'll help you hash out some details and, you know, maybe we can put something together and you could have this little consulting type agency. Um, So he comes back 15, 20 minutes later with a handful of names, writes them on my whiteboard. And for the life of me, I can only remember two. One was Bad Rhino and the other one was Moosehorn. And the other, there was another 10 names on there. We stuck with Bad Rhino, and we were off the races shortly thereafter. Hmm, very memorable. Yes, it is. What are the social media it's a mar- real story? That's, <laughs> exactly. That's what I love about it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um, my my real estate company is Lair, and our uh, logo is a lion, and there's a story mm-hmm. behind it. So every time I sit down with a possible agent that is joining the company, I start right from the beginning, how our name came about and how it relates to lions hanging out in layers, et cetera. And it sticks with people. So I love Bad Rhino. Um, what are the, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. What are the social media yeah. marketing challenges for businesses and entrepreneurs as you see it? I think the biggest one, and this is just about everybody, I mean, every size company, every marketing department, every entrepreneur, every small business owner, they get caught up in what's what's new. Um, They don't necessarily chase the shiny object all over the place, but they get caught up in what could this new thing do for my business rather than being just like anything else in life. If you're consistent with something, you can get good at it, just start to see results. 
um, and they're not uh, immediate, but you know, there's a, an effect to it, you know, just residual effect to it. And that's what I see is we have so many people come to us at first and they're like, we don't even know where to start. And some of them have established businesses and some of them are starting out. And it's really fascinating to see that. Now, seven years ago, it was like, hey, we don't know where to start because we don't understand it. Fast forward seven years, it's, hey, we don't even know like where we should focus because it seems to be just a new, new something every single day. That's the biggest challenge. And what I tell everybody to overcome that challenge is, Wherever your market is, and whoever the people who you are that you sell to, that's where you want to be. You know, I hear people like, "Well, we want to start an Instagram, you know, page. That's fine. Um, go ahead. But do you have anybody there that you think would, you know, take a look at your service? Mm-hmm. No, we actually think they're on LinkedIn or Facebook. We'll start there and get good at one, and then move on to the next ones because they can all tie together in some way. Right. Hmm. So how can a business leverage their social media? Um, the biggest part is to communicate with current customers first. Um, and then the second phase of it would be to acquire new customers. So the best way to do it is to inform them and entertain them. Let's just take something simple um, like a restaurant. You know, it's a very simple idea. Let's just say you serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner and your main focus is on dinner is you have a a great wine collection. So instead of inundating everybody with just wine, since you're known for it, what you want to do is maybe just put things that pair well with the wine, educate the consumer why they might come in there, what makes it a little bit different, but also share wine news and food news just for that general area. That sounds simple, and most people go, well, that seems like a waste of time. But that's what people are doing day in, day out, flipping on their phones. They're looking for interesting things to read while they're at work or while they're waiting at the doctor's office and things like that. If you hit them with a sales thing, it tends to turn people off. So you have to come up with a way that your audience starts to engage, and you have to look at your analytics, and it's a process. So the best way to do it is to start to educate your current consumers, get them to take a look at something that might be interesting to them, and share it. It goes back to basic common sense business, in my my opinion, where when you'd walk into a store, they would know your name because you're local to that neighborhood or wherever. They would just know your name, knew what you wanted, or <clears throat> had some semblance of a, an idea of who you are and what your shopping habits were, and they would cater to you. Um, and I think people like that, and social media can put that bridge to it. Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole list of other things where you can build email lists and start to target new people and new customers to get on their radar. You can really talk about this for, for hours on end. Hmm. It's so interesting. Basically, um, and I'll let you tell me what pieces I might be missing, but for my own company Facebook page, First of all, I think that when it comes to social media strategy, would you agree that you have to help people not only have a great, for example, business page, but sometimes you really have to help the individual person just have a presence on Facebook. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Um, It depends on your business. Um, Like if you were to search me in my personal life, um, I don't put a lot of things out there. Mm -hmm. I would keep my, my personal page more business focused and some fun. I do testing on my page. Yeah. So I might comment on a wacky political post just to see how the, the algorithm right. responds to me. But it really depends on the personality of the person and what they want to be online. And that's where we start at Bad Rhino is we talk to everybody and go, okay, what's your voice online? Who do you want to be? And it shouldn't be much different than who you are in real life. Because you need that transparency because once people meet you and you create a business relationship, they want to know who they're working with. But at the same time, you know, there's differences between what you might post personally versus what you might post um, professionally. So you come up with that just style there. And Mm -hmm. the next phase of that, to your point, is helping them establish that and saying, okay, who do you want to be? You want to be, for Marty McDonald, it's, Bad Rhino, he runs Bad Rhino, and he also has golf and beer clients, but also um, has golf and beer brands under Bad Rhino. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk a lot about me playing golf and, you know, testing and trying out new beers. Right. So 
you know, having that balance, but that doesn't 100% pertain to Bad Rhino, but I made that business more of my personality along with my business partner to create um, a feeling to it, you know. So a lot of times when I do podcast interviews or I mention in articles, the one thing is, is Marty plays golf and drinks beer and on the side he runs a successful marketing agency, right? right. I thought that was cool, like when somebody just said that. Right. They said, yeah, I was just looking around your profile. So you get a feel for that. So to your point, yes, you have to establish <clears throat> a voice for that business. And in time, at most times, it's a voice for that person to be online. Right. And also what you're really laying out here is businesses should have some sort of strategy so that you're not necessarily just posting willy nilly like we no we put out just weekly i sit with my social media person and each week we try to number one show our expertise which we do through blogging about real mm -hmm. estate since mine's a real estate company um number two we also have to segment who is actually the watching our social media so we have two different types of people one is other agents our own agents and other real estate agents and buying and selling consumers so it's two different messages so we try to blog about yep. our expertise we try to motivate motivational quotes jpeg motivational yep. quotes get shared like crazy um yep. client testimonials will turn into a jpeg put it on our Facebook page, um, in-house happenings, what's happening at our company. And the big piece that we implemented this year, and I would love your take on it, is we never really had a great social me media strategy for creating leads. And over the last mm -hmm. six months, we've gotten good at creating like click funnel pages with paid search on Facebook that's creating, like kind of baiting people with what a home buyer would be looking for, where they'd be willing to give us an email address for that info or what a seller would be looking for. What is your take on generating leads through social media? Um, yeah, it's, first of all, it's great. Um, just back up for one second, I'll get to the leads. What you just outlined for anybody listening to it is the start of any social media, actually any marketing strategy when you're developing content. And if you can get... We tell everybody uh, when we speak at you know, Chamber of Commerce or small business startup type things or ideas is start off with a weekly content, you know, because sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. Just start off weekly, mm -hmm. schedule a couple posts, schedule a couple things, and then see how they, you know, the community responds and then start to map that out a month early. And, you know, you get a robust strategy and you can start to see, you know, things you coming back to seeing like, hey, the motivational quotes were shared, mm -hmm. you know, so why don't we combine a motivational quote picture <clears throat> with a blog article right. and see, you know, see what the differences are and see if that gets shared more than if we just post the blog. In terms of leads, it's tremendous. Um, it can be, you know, you have to be willing to, you know, break a few eggs to right. kind of get that omelet going. Right. <laughs> um, people get frustrated a lot of times when they run Facebook ads. Um, and it used to, I wouldn't say it was ever simple, but it was very simple and easy um, a few years ago when the ad platform was just maturing because you, they would default to giving you the results that you want. Right. And what I mean by that is if you said, hey, 30 miles around Philadelphia that were interested in real estate, they would show it to everybody in real estate. Right. So now it's like, I want to have realtor leads, let's just say you're an insurance agent. Mm -hmm. And now you have to get down to a granular level where it's like specifically, hey, hey, I'm working in real estate and I'm a realtor and I work at these companies and you can target, which is great. Um, but it takes a little bit of time to get that targeting down. And sometimes people burn through money not knowing what they're doing mm -hmm. and they get frustrated with it. And um, we hear that quite often, but I love it for leads and emails. <clears throat> and you really have to just dial it in and make sure you're getting adequate, um, first off, adequate response. Second, make sure they're legit. And what I mean by that is when you start emailing them, start to look at your open rates. Yes. We've had a lot of people come through and talk with us and they say, this is great. You know, we built a 4,000 person email list through Facebook ads. We're looking to take it next level, so we're looking to outsource some things, and we're talking to Bad Rhino. 
And I get all excited because I'm like, wow, that was awesome. They built an email list already on their own, so they kind of know what's going on. And I find out, like, well, how many times have you emailed the list? Well, we haven't emailed it yet. (laughs) It's like, okay, how do you even know if that data that you just got was any good? So it's important to get the leads and then start emailing right away so that, say you get leads on Sunday, you could wait, they opt in, they get something to download, so they have an instant, that's right. number one. Then number two, um, you want to email that list on a weekly basis just to see who's opening it, right. number one. Number two, um, if anybody's clicking through. And then more importantly, number three, if they leave. Sometimes people will see it like a PDF um, or like a little video series and they get it and then they just leave because they're like, this is what I was looking for, but yep. I want to go with somebody else for the service. So it's important to get the leads Mm-hmm. but also engage with them immediately. But Facebook's great for lead generation these days. Hmm. That's awesome. And I think it's all about tweaking. Like you just gave me an awesome idea. Constantly. Yeah, like taking the, well, those um, motivational quotes, embedding them into the articles so that we're, I bet it will increase the number of shares on those expert blog pieces. So mm-hmm. that's awesome. Well, tons of great stuff. For anybody that's listening, by the way, we have Marty McDonald from Bad Rhino, a marketing and social media company. Where can people find you? Uh, you can simply go to badrhinoinc.com. Um, we have a blog on there with a lot of great information. And every interview I do, uh, this has been a good thing and a bad thing, but it's been more good than bad. I just give out my email. Uh, if you send me an email, mention that you heard me on this radio show. Um, I will gladly respond to that question as fast as I can. And it's Marty, M-A-R-T-Y, at badrhinoinc.com. And our website has all our other information. So check it out. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today, Marty. Thanks, Marty. Uh, Thank you. Great to talk to you guys. I appreciate it. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this. 